This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at the uh, Nokian Proving Ground here near Ivalo. And uh, today I'm going to show you something interesting. So, uh, Nokian, they use a Model 3 performance. This is the old version, doesn't matter too much. And I don't know if you guys can hear the high pitched noise. If I come closer to the front wheel here, you probably heard it before in some of my videos. Uh, I call it the afterburners. So right now we are charging on DC and the, the car, Tesla has programmed the car to heat up the battery to um, roughly 40 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, I didn't bring scan my Tesla so that I don't know, have any insight in how hot the battery is. But let me just show you what's going on now. So you see, um, Nokian, they have a Chem Power T-Series. This is portable uh, charger, but um, over here though, we have, they have only 25 amp, 400 volt, three phase. So uh, the, the charge been configured to uh, deliver maximum 16 kilowatt. And if we look here, uh, can we see some studies here? Okay, but you see, we have received, we have received 14 kilowatts since the start. So I'm gonna show you something. So, 14 kilowatt is what the charger is delivering, all right? How many kilowatt do we actually get into the battery? Well, fortunately, the car shows you here. All right, let me bring up the charging screen. Here, you can see how fast we're charging. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding, but we have to look here. It's freaking tiny, man. Tesla with the new software update, it sucks, but Look at this, we are receiving only seven kilowatt hour per hour. Um, the heater is off. What the heck is going on? The charger is delivering uh, 14 kilowatt and we are only receiving seven kilowatt. Well, the remaining seven kilowatt, as you guys have seen before in many of my other videos, goes to the afterburners. You can hear that little, that is humming sound. So the car has been programmed to heat up the battery because once the battery hits 100%, again, 22%, once the battery uh, goes high enough, let's say around uh, 80 kilowatt, 70 kilowatt, uh, it, wa it wants to be warmer so it can take faster charging. So basically the car, uh, Tesla has programmed the car to not cold gate. So it's a good thing that it heats up the battery for DC charging, but it depends because if you want to supercharge normally uh, you want to it once if you navigate to a fast charger somewhere um, it will preheat before you get there but if you don't do that for some reason it will also start heating at the battery once you start charging which is fine for most cases but there are some cases where you go to a 50 kilowatt fast charger you want to plug it in and top up for only 10 minutes what happens then well you don't get 50 kilowatt that's the first thing uh, you might only get around 35 kilowatt because the voltage is a bit lower. But then um, again, seven kilowatt goes into heating of the battery almost for no reason because uh, uh, you only need 10 minutes of charging. You might only top up from here to here a little bit and you don't really care about over here because at the bottom here, the car might be able to take 40 kilowatt anyway, right? But then this is actually worst case it's not common to see something like this that we are only receiving seven kilowatt. <laughs> the problem is that the car has been pre-programmed to heat up the battery. Um, th it would be great if there was a way to disable this, but then how are we going to do this? Because then we make we make the car it makes it over advanced, and Tesla seems like they want to dumb down the system. They don't want to have an expert mode. I've been talking about some kind of expert mode, advanced mode for the longest time. Tesla refuses to implement that, even though I think many Tesla owners, they are already experts. Th that's probably one of the reasons why they choose to buy a Tesla anyway. And then uh, the, the people who are not experts, they buy legacy automakers instead. <laughs> but also, <clears throat> But then again, this is not a too common case that you have 
kind of slow DC charger. Most DC chargers would be at least 50 kilowatt or faster. And then the portion of the energy you spend for heating up uh, is lower. Uh, uh, like I mentioned, 35 kilowatt versus a 50 kilowatt fast charger, right? But actually over here, it's kind of bad uh, for, for Nokia and the way they, they use the car uh, because they, every time the car comes in here in the depot, you see we have a little bit snow, it comes in here uh, during the day for some testing. Uh, we plug it in, it starts heating up the bat. Why is it doing that click? But it, it heats up the battery over here once we are here. But then once they are on the track testing cars, you see, you see we, we have tires here ready. Uh, various tires they do for testing. So once, once they finish, let's say we are here for half an hour, we top up, it heats up the battery, it reaches 35 degrees, almost 40 degrees Celsius. Then we are done with the charging. And then what the Nokian guys do is that they then go on the track, but then they turn on track mode because they want to, uh, they want to have the 50-50% bias uh, but they also want to uh, disable parts of the um, traction control. So, but then what happens once they get on the track and they use track mode? It starts cooling down the battery from 30 something degrees to, I don't know, uh, 15 degrees Celsius. And then they, they take some laps around the track and then they come back here and then they change tires, they plug it in. <laughs> Uh, and the car detects that this is DC charging and then it starts heating up the battery again. And the worst part is that since this is an old version, it doesn't do any heat scavenging. So, uh, and also when we enable track mode, it will prioritize cooling down the battery as fast as it can. So basically what happens now is that in the workshop, you spend, well, you, you get 16 kilowatt or I'm not sure if it's 16 or 14, uh, but you pump in a lot of heat into the battery for no reason. And then once you're out there on the ice, then you dump all the heat out there. And then you... <laughs> so yes, I told Nokian guys, they were actually uh, quite... They, 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 they didn't know and they are aware of it right now. And uh, they will install um, uh, some uh, Tesla wall box or something. You see here we have red plugs here. Uh, but I guess they will not use the red plug. But in case we will have a UMC, we could charge on AC instead. Let's say if this one will give you 11 kilowatt AC, then what's going to happen then when you plug it in? This one via uh, UMC or a Tesla wall box will then input 11 kilowatt of AC into the car. And then the onboard charger is very efficient. I think you only have around 500 watts of losses. So then you actually get 10 to, yeah, let's say you get around 10 to 10.5 kilowatt into the battery. So you input 11 kilowatt and you get 10. Here we input something like 14 or 16 kilowatt and we get only seven kilowatts. <laughs> the only exception for this, which is also interesting, I find it interesting is that during the day, it's bad, but at least at night now, we are done for the day, we've been doing some track driving and stuff. For the night, it's actually not that bad, because what's going to happen now is the battery reaches 40 degrees Celsius. The car, once it reaches 40 degrees Celsius, uh, the, the afterburner will cut, and then it will start, I mean, then, then it will, uh, the speed of the, bat the battery will then suddenly receive 14 or 16 kilowatt without any losses in heat generation anymore. And then it keeps this, this, this just keeps charging like this until it reaches the 100% the or 90%, whatever they set. Um, and then um, it stops charging. And then that, that will usually happen in the evening hours, right? Uh, well, actually, how long is it going to take? Let's find out how long will it take before the car is finished charging. Um, where can I? Okay, four, four hours. Hey, really? Huh, interesting. You know, the car already knows that it will take four hours. Even though if this was, if this was um, uh, 7.4 kilowatt AC or something, 
it wouldn't take four hours it would take way longer maybe 10 hours or at least eight hours so at least the car knows that eventually the afterburners will shut down but okay anyway so in four hours so which means that 16 uh, 17 uh yeah so uh, five six, yeah five six seven yeah so so nine yeah at nine tonight the car will finish charging the battery will be nice and hot and then what will happen then the battery will cool down and it will slowly run the the fan and circulate and cool down the battery but it will take a while but naturally all the heat will then disappear out from the car and it will heat up the workshop and there are some heaters that is uh, uh, temperature control so then the heaters will not need to run that much so at least overnight the losses here are not that great because i also asked the nuken guys they don't lower the temperature here during the night maybe they should but they don't so so i just find it interesting that yeah <laughs> this is uh, a funny case but again worst case um but again i've it happened sometimes that i need to top up at the 50 kilowatt only for 10 15 minutes and then you're basically just wasting that heat uh but again okay it depends okay again it depends because if you do this with a new car the one you have chrome delete and the one where uh, you have octa valve it's not going to be that bad given that it's winter or listen listen let's check out something i was about to end the video but because I didn't expect anything to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. You see, now we're getting 14 kilowatts. But this car has been charging here for... What can we see how long? Oh, you know what? This car doesn't tell me how long I've been charging. You see? Do we see anywhere here how long I've been charging? Nine. That's where we need chem power power. Because on the chem power charger... You click here, you go here, and you see that we'll be charging for over half. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Oh, nice. We've been charging for around 33 minutes. So during 33 minutes, it heated up the battery to the point where, wait, look, look, look at this. 14, hey, this is interesting. Ah, the actual power that went in was in fact 14 kilowatt, not 16. And for some reason now we are taking 15 kilowatt. So the, the, um, yeah, 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 ah, this one is just what is available. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Yeah, 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 ah, okay, that makes sense. So it was, it's, it was 14 kilowatt all this time. That makes sense. Seven kilowatt went into the heater. Yes, so, <laughs> yeah, but my point was that it would be a nice feature if somehow I can override it. Um, and uh, tell the car or just press a button or something that I don't want it to heat up the battery and maybe there will be a warning like okay are you sure you want to stop the battery heater it will make uh, charging slower yeah? and then you say yes and then Ch that would be great do you guys agree that would be great but like I said there are some conditions here if it was if it's winter and if you have the new car uh, model Y or model uh, 3 with heat pump and octavalve and the chrome delete that's how you you figure out if you have chrome delete from factory and if you have the new uh, center console that has the the charging pads so this is the old one you just show the we don't have the charging pad here and it, it doesn't look that nice this is the old one then you don't have heat pump for this car um, it means that the heat or once once you you charge somewhere and you leave the charger even in winter it cannot scavenge the heat from the battery to heat up the cabin only the heat pump cars can do that i thought for the longest time it could do that it turns out it can't do that so for example mc hammer which is the old model also like this one after the fast charging session even in minus 25 degrees celsius that car will do a stupid thing which is to dump the heat from the battery out to the environment instead of keeping it in the in the car but if you have a new car uh, and you have the heat pump then it's not that bad 
uh, that you spend some extra energy heating up the battery, even if you top up for 15 minutes, because it means that once you start driving, your consumption will be way lower because you're scavenging on that heat you build up in the battery until, yeah. Uh, but then that is only during winter or if it's cold enough outside. If it's summer, if it's you living in California, then again, you don't. So what I'm saying is that we want to control the battery heater. Can we get that feature? Okay, anyway, I'm gonna end now. This was uh, interesting to see what's going on now. So <laughs> that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.